Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm going to show you the first full comic I've ever drawn and compare it to the most recent comic I've drawn. Alright, so this is uh, the first full comic I'd ever drawn. I'd drawn um, short stories prior to this that were, you know, three to five or six pages long, but this is a 24 page comic. The first thing, I, first time I'd ever tackled anything this big, and uh, it's based off of, uh, or it's it's a character I created in junior high school. I think it was in eighth or ninth grade, uh, Missile Mouse, and um, I ended up drawing this um, in my early twenties. I was uh, um, I was living in California at the time. My friend Cole Glass uh, helped me with the story. Uh, he's a filmmaker now um, but back then we had you know plans to do comics and um, and so I think I mean it was it was a lot of work it was hard but I learned so much just from doing this this uh, this first comic um, and I kind of took everything that I'd been uh, reading in comics and all my favorite you know artists and 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 their storytelling techniques and my favorite comics and 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 everything i just kind of dumped it all into this into this comic so first you can see uh this thing right here is is uh is a is what i ended up turning it into so scanned these in and i made this little ash can at kinko's and i took this with me to uh, the 2001 san diego comic-con and that's where I met Jeff Smith for the first time. He's the creator of Bone. He's one of my comics heroes, and I wanted him to see this comic that I made, and I'd given him a copy, and he really he flipped out about it. He loved it, and that was like the hugest confidence boost I ever had, um, and uh, it just got me wanting to, to really do more comics and sort of led me down this, this comics path that I've been on. Um, so this comic right here, it's 24 pages. Uh, I think these sheets are something like 11 by 17. Uh, it's Bristol board, and I remember getting a big Bristol board sheet and trimming them down to this size and measuring out each page, um, and uh, and drawing it with, I believe, uh, Pigma pens. If I have one here, yeah. So these, not this one. Um, uh, I don't, I don't have the exact pen. But they're technical pens, pigment technical pens, um, the microns. Uh, anyways, um, so you can see here, Missile Mouse. He's coming into his garage. He, uh, his, his bike, his precious bike, has just been trashed in the last adventure. There's bullet holes, and it looks like he crashed it. And he's going to fix it, and getting it all better. Uh, meanwhile, um, down at the docks, the space docks, uh, someone unloads a crate, and there's this giant robot that kind of freaks out and uh, they call for for backup and that's when Missile Mouse is he's working on it beep 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 and he's like Missile Mouse we need you he's like okay I'm on my way and he just finished his bike and uh, and so he he cruises down there um, <clears throat> so here he is on his bike heading to the, to the IRG which is the Intergalactic Regulations Guild or, or something like that I think that's what it was uh, a bird poops on his his bike and he's like what and so he shoots the bird and I wanted to show that Missile Mouse was like he didn't care like his bike's precious and he loves it and my friend Cole is like you know it's a little little rough he you know the bird's innocent <laughs> you probably shouldn't have Missile Mouse your main character like shooting a bird first thing um, and so I took that part out and I redrew page five and uh, I kept the the bike image up here but he goes by and he actually sees this robot um, and he goes to uh, he goes it's sort of in hibernation mode and he goes down to check on it um, to see what what the deal is um, and what happens um, he gets close to it and like its defense mechanism tap taps it this defense mechanism uh, punches him and he flies uh, um, you know, he flies and lands somewhere. I don't know, but uh, these are hard to look at. I could see I was still kind of figuring out character design, and that's just an ugly face. The proportions are a little weird. Um, I'm not 
I'm not too happy with it. I like the design of this guy. He's based off of a character in FLCL, which was one of my favorite animes at the time. Anyways, so then uh, Missile Mouse walks in. He's like, all right, what's going on here? And there's like a confrontation between him and Bridge. And she's like this android girl. She's got like uh, android pieces sticking into her head. And it helps her keep track of everything that's going on. So she's going to tell him what's going on with the situation. She's like, here's what happened first. This is where you, you know, this is the first incident. Here's the second incident. Third thing, fourth thing. And this is where we're at now. And she's like, Ulrich, uh, you know, Ulrich is the scientist. And he's going to, uh, um, he's going to help them, show them how that they can stop this creature. And you can see here, the monitor they're looking at is the head of, um, Canty the robot, I think that's how you say his name, from Fully Cooly. Uh, anyways, threw that in there. So he shows up and he's got this cool gun, and Missile Mouse is like, oh, give it to me, give it to me. He's like, oh, no, 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 not yet. Crash. Oh, what's going on outside? He's like, give me the gun. Let's go. And now it's when the action sort of, sort of kicks in. Almost. So he hops out. He's like, what's going on? And there is the, the robot right behind him. And he freaks out flips the gun around and man looking at this is rough like I would really have done this differently now <laughs> it's a little too tight and that is just an awkward pose it's like all too scrunched in I do like that pose though but um anyways you could see there was potential here but not I mean there's things that I just didn't know um, this was a good this is a good panel so BAM smacks Missile Mouse Missile Mouse lands on top of the boot factory uh, right by where he was before which I think was a little convenient and there's his bike and so the things coming after him I love this panel that one I think turned out really good she crashes down Missile Mouse gets on his bike lights the afterburner and um, and burns him in the face uh, as he takes off um, and you could see here I had him looking back but I thought he should look forward and I didn't have white out so I just drew both eyes and then I think in Photoshop I, I took out the eyes one thing I noticed too is uh, because of the technical pens I was using I was really like really getting into the detail here and adding every little nut, nut and bolt and I think that makes for some nice extra detail but um, uh, Nowadays, the way I draw is a little more gestural, so it's not exactly about every little, well, maybe I still kind of do that, but I just, it's interesting how much care and thought back then I took and I was into making sure this stuff was, was really interesting, you know, looked cool and, and looked functional. Uh, okay, so now he's going... He's cruising. This is sort of an anime type of thing where you have the the main action like superimposed in front of the panels. I don't do that much. I think this is the only area I've really, this is the only comic I've kind of done that thing. It's cool. Um, but I think what, ha what happens is you sacrifice looking cool for storytelling legibility. Anyway, so he sc scoops by, he snags it, and there's the, the robot ticked off, landed right in his path. So Missile Mouse sh shooms up, um, turns around, and fires a blast, and the guy jumps out of the way. Um, and then we have this weird sideways panel. I don't know if I would have... I definitely would have done something more vertical for this, but uh, who knows. Okay, so he's jumping. Missile Mouse fires again, but it's out of batteries. It's just clicking, and he's like, what the heck? And... Ulrich's like, you gotta charge it. You can only do one shot, it better count. He's like, oh, geez. He's all, don't worry, I got another battery here for you. So Missile Mouse uh, now is faced with this guy and he jumps down, or he, he flies down, and this thing like is jumping after him in hot pursuit. Missile Mouse is like, I'm coming. Have the thing ready, I'm gonna fly right over you. This thing's coming right behind him. Coming, coming, they're like, here he is, he's coming. And um, he has the gun out, he drops it, Bridge catches it, knocks her off her feet, 
Ulrich's like, oh shoot, and then they see the thing just plow right through their their command vehicle. And she's like, he's like, Bridge, throw me the gun. Oh, I should also note, if you look at this, um, I left these in my basement in Connecticut, and we had a leaky basement, and I think they were on the ground or something. Anyways, they got soaked, so now they're like looking really wrinkled and in, pre in pretty bad shape. Um, if you like your artwork and you want to make sure it doesn't do this, keep it in a nice, dry, safe place. Um, anyways, grabs it, loads the battery, click clack. I don't know if I needed those four panels. It's kind of overkill, but it works. Um, she's all, here he comes, throw it up. Missile Mouse catches it. He puts his bike on autopilot. He jumps off, does a flip over. That's kind of a cool panel. It's coming down, and he fires one last blast, and, and then he does that cool landing pose that everybody does. Um, when he shoots it, everybody's running to it. He's like, uh, "What's wrong with it?" And then something something happened with the blast, and the thing totally um, <laughs> goes giant, like quadruples in size and they're like oh, Ulrich what's the matter and he starts doing calculations and then he starts explaining oh here's what happened when you shot him blah 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 um, and he's like what he's like never mind here's what we're gonna do we're gonna and this is his sort of explanation you're gonna we're gonna turn the gun into a laser sight and then we'll have our satellite tell the missiles from our missile silos to to come and explode it look out and then the hand comes down smashing um, Missile Mouse is like, okay, I got it. Um, they unload or they uh, open up all the missile silos. Missile Mouse gets into position to fire it. And that's when the robot is picking up something. He's like, what is it? And he looks closer and it's his bike. And he totally smashes his bike. And Missile Mouse is like, no, my bike. And so this is, you see all the missiles hitting it? Missile Mouse. I should have had a panel there where Missile Mouse is like, you know, I hate you, and he, he shoots, he clicks it. But instead, I guess we just assume that the missiles, I don't know, bad storytelling. This part's good, this part gets confusing. But anyways, all the missiles are coming. They hit them, and you can see here, this is like what happens when you leave it in the water. And you forget about it. it blows up, and then we see on the inside, um, it's a slaver that's sort of controlling the robot and um, that's why he's going berserk and I'm not sure what his motive was again some things I would have done differently anyways Missile Mouse is like you're gonna die and so he points it fires the big giant missile launches with Missile Mouse on the top Missile Mouse is riding the missile, and he, uh, he, uh, the robot catches it. This is sort of like, I guess, uh, Evangelion. Missile Mouse jumps off, whoosh, saves himself. The thing's like, ha, 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 I stopped the missile from, la from uh, landing. But then it goes into phase two, and it pulls him up into the sky whoosh, and blows up. And Missile Mouse climbs to safety. The next day he gets up out of bed, he reads the newspaper, he takes a shower, he puts on his coat, opens the door to his garage, and there we see, just like the beginning pages, um, he walks in and he's like, there's my baby, and he's gonna start fixing it. And what's in this next page? Oh, the cover. I got the cover right here. Um, so there you are. Alright, so that is my first comic, and uh, let's look at the most recent one. This is Rocket Raccoon. Kind of ironic that I started with Missile Mouse, and now I'm doing Rocket Raccoon. So here is Rocket Raccoon issue 9, and uh, this is the one that's most recently come out uh, last Wednesday, I think is when it came out. And I uh, already could see here... Um, I think uh, there's a little more confidence in in camera angles and just in what I'm what I'm approaching 
uh, with what I'm drawing. You can see here this is uh, Manhattan that's um, getting destroyed. Um, and you can see that I'm using a different pen now. I'm using uh, my brush pen. I think I inked it with this guy right here, uh, which is a Pilot uh, brush pen. And um, and so the drawings are a little bit looser, but I think what that does is it gives them a lot more energy. Uh, we have Hulk running, jumping, and he's bouncing up the buildings, kind of like the robot in Missile Mouse. Um, and here we have Groot, a giant panel, a less, you know, a, a close-up of, of Hulk getting, getting crunched. Um, and uh, it's just a lot more dynamic. The camera's looking up at him. I should say this um, this comic was written by Scotty Young, and uh, the nice thing about working with with Scotty, who's a, f a friend of mine, is um, we sort of you know he writes the story, but he he's like, what do you want to draw? What do you want to work on? He knows my strengths, and he knows what kind of stories play to my strengths. So he's like Giant Groot. There's a mech later on in the book. Uh, Iron Man, you know. Uh, uh, crazy technological stuff. He, he knows what I like to draw, and so he um, he uh, he writes for that. I appreciate it. So here we are. Have the Avengers. This takes place 50 years in the future. So Iron Man's old. Captain America, you know, still looks young, but you can see he's he's uh, he's tattered and torn. He's got bionic limbs. There's um, Black Widow with her two kids who are both into archery. Uh, I'm assuming Hawkeye has um, uh, arrow, arrow. No, it's his name's Hawkeye, right? Assuming he's died at some point. But um, establishing shot, and then coming in closer, and then you could just see. I th man, I just feel like my storytelling has gotten a lot better since 2001. It has been 14 years, so I would hope it get better. Um, uh, here we have, um, uh, I guess story-wise, they're talking about, you know, this is the end of the Avengers, you know, well, you know, Hulk just sacrificed himself, and, and Captain America's like, I can't remember what they're saying, but it's somewhat profound. Anyways, they, they're like, the only guy that could stop him is, is Rocket Raccoon. We need to go find him. Uh, and he's like, I know where he is. So here we have Nowhere, which is the, if you saw Guardians of the Galaxy, it's the giant head that everybody lives in. Or I guess not everybody, but it's a, it's a city inside the head. And, uh, and Tony Stark has like a machine that he can control his Iron Man units wherever. And so he's got a satellite outside of Nowhere that he can control the satellites um, or con control the, uh, the Iron Man. And so this guy pops on, and you know it's 50 years in the future, so um, nowhere has been built out, and there's cities coming out out of the head instead of just inside the head. And there's looks like it's been in a war, and there's shrapnel and all kinds of construction equipment and stuff just floating around it. Um, he flies in, and I think uh, one thing that I've, I've gotten a lot more comfortable with over the years is drawing. Uh, big scenes and with lots of characters and I used to avoid it and now I embrace it and I love just drawing um, uh, these big big scenes with lots of characters and big and big environments with lots going on and I think it is using the brush pen helps me to stay loose so it doesn't feel too um, I think that was a problem with the missile mouse is a lot of the environments and the, the drawings just felt stiff and lifeless and I think using that brush keeps them from uh, keeps them from uh, from feeling dull but but exciting um, okay so here we find rocket and he's old and gnarled and scarred and he's a street fighter had fun with the with the sound effects I love doing sound effects um, and so uh, I also actually hit if you look there I hid missile mouse in the background and an Ewok um, that's sort of a Mike Wazowski type character and that's a dude from uh, uh, Dark Knight Returns. Is that what it was? I don't know if it's in, it's definitely inspired by him a little bit. Uh, but here we see Rocket. He's fighting. Um, 
And one thing I've learned in comics too now is that you definitely want to showcase and have a nice spotlight uh, on your character when you when you first meet them. Um, and I sort of had that with Missile Mouse, but it was delayed several pages. Um, but it's kind of nice to have your character there in the spotlight when you when you first meet him. Um, so there's Iron Man, and he's telling you know we need your help, and he's like I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, and he's like, but it's Groot. I should have read this again just so I know what they're saying, but I think that's what it was. And it stops them. He's like, all right, if you're buying, I'll talk. If you're buying drinks, I'll talk. So here they are uh, uh, at the at the bar. And again, um, I like putting in little details that you might not notice at first glance. Um, little characters in the background. And this one I have these two guys sitting next to each other, but his tail's coming around and he's stealing the guy's wallet out of the back. Anyways, they're talking, and he's like, Groot's turned into a giant monster, we need your help. And uh, he says something that offends them, and they get into a little fight, and uh, uh, Rocket quickly dispatches them. Um, and you can see here, I changed up the panels. The, the thing I'm doing with Rocket, as opposed to, to what I had done in the past, is really making these panels um uh with the with the different angles just giving them a little more life with 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 the angles and not saying that that works for every comic but rocket's fun and, and irreverent and i sort of went tried to go that way with the, the panel structure all right so he he blasts the helmet and this snaps tony out of his um you know out of his uh, virtual reality thing captain's like hey tony we got him we gotta evacuate. What's going on? The whole thing's shaking and falling apart. And actually, this panel used to be a different panel. I, um, I realized I didn't have a close-up of him on this page, so I wanted a close-up there. And then we see here the ships coming apart that they're in. Captain's falling. Tony salutes salutes him, and then we pull out to see Groot is destroying the helio helio carrier. I think that's how you call it. This was fun. Uh, this was really fun to draw. Um, and again, uh, my, my, I think 14 years ago when I drew Missile Mouse, like I would have gone in and really made things a lot more structurally sound with this, but this is more gestural and it's more just getting the, the right shapes and, and the feeling of it and not worrying so much about every little bolt and detail. Um, but, but giving just enough information that looks complicated but it still feels um, life like it's full life. So he slams it down. Tony says something to him and gets squashed. All right, back to Rocket. And he's thinking about what he should do. And he's looking at old photos of him and, and Groot. And I went into Photoshop and added um, panels from the other comics in here. So it was nice and cool. Um, you know, be kind of taken through memory lane through the comic. So anyways, he's like deciding what to do, and then he realizes, you know what, I'm going to do it. He grabs his keys and goes to his ship um, and, uh, and then flies out and goes through a portal. This page, I'm really proud of. I love this page. So here he comes in through the portal. We see Groot getting ready to stomp, and this panel right here, he, Groot's in perspective. You know the hands in the foreground, the, the the jet or his rocket ship is is flying past him. I really like how that turned out. And then we got the close up of of rocket inside his his ship, and then cut to the ship and it starts to um, transform. And you can kind of see here some speed lines. I ended up going into Manga Studio and and doing some nice speed lines really quick that ended up in the final comic transforms into like a rocket raccoon Gundam uh, and this page was like <laughs> I think I went and did almost did this page first before I did other I remember penciling it first just because I wanted to I wanted to get to it um, and this so much these panels aren't so much really it's about this image right here these panels are sort of like uh, you know not that you would read panel to panel you just kind of get the idea that he's transforming and this is the final thing and then we have the double page spread 
um, and Groot has ripped Rocket Raccoon in two, and he's chucking the other half, and the city's in shambles. Um, that was a fun page to do. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then we see Rocket has, um, you know, this blank screen right here is going to be the double page spread in the final comic. That's where it, where it ends up. Rocket takes off his VR mask and he's like, what the heck is going on? I thought I was a, a hero. And he's like, I just tell you what, you know, the possible futures are. I don't tell you what, you know, how to fix things. That's something you're going to have to do on your own. And and Rocket's like, well, what's he still doing? And um, this alien was really cool. Scotty was just like, do a cool alien just come up with something. So I thought this big blob with all these tubes and wires coming out of them would be would be fun. Um, and you could see, you know, in these comics, I'm not afraid to use black, uh, black ink, and 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 really lay it in there. Um, in in in, uh, in the Missile Mouse comics, it was almost like uh, it was all about the line, just having everything be really liney, and I didn't want to put ink on the page, but. Here it was no problem. Anyways, Rocket's saying something. He's like, you need to go save your friend. Or he's like, what you did was saved your friend. He went from this crazy monster to realizing what he was because of your sacrifice. And Rocket's like, what? He's all, see for yourself. So he sticks the, the VR helmet back on. And we see that, you know, years in the future, the city's been rebuilt. Groot has grown into a beautiful tree to sh that shades the city, and in his hand they built a, a golden statue of, of Rocket Raccoon. And Rocket's like, I'm a hero. Um, and uh, there we go. And, you know, one thing I noticed, too, that's different between what I do now and what I've done, you know, did in the past is just letting the comic be you know it seems like I was really worried about getting a lot of panels into a page and and making sure a lot of information was there and what I'm realizing now is that comics I don't know whether the reader is more sophisticated or or just my understanding of storytelling has changed but you just want to have panels where you can rest and where you can kind of enjoy the moment and so there's big panels like this there's the double page the double page spread um, Keeping, you know, I try to keep my panel count per page, uh, you know, down. Whereas in Missile Mouse, it looked like it was seven or eight panels per page in places. Um, here in, in Rocket Raccoon, it's, you know, four, maybe even three panels, or, or at the most, six panels. Here's a, a five page. No, this is a six one. But if it is a six page panel, I give one panel dominant. Anyways. I just thought I'd share. I thought that was kind of interesting. I was going through my old files. I thought you guys might appreciate looking looking at this and seeing that, um, uh, you know, you can improve. You can get better. Um, you should be proud of what you're working on at the time, but know that there's always room for improvement. You're always going to get better as long as you keep practicing and keep working on it. Um, so that's it. Thanks. All right, hopefully some of you guys got something out of that. I just found my old Missile Mouse uh, pages uh, in my flat file, and uh, I was like, oh, this would be so cool to kind of compare and contrast the old with the new. So hopefully that was beneficial. Uh, two things I just wanted to talk about at the close of this video. Um, uh, this book is no longer available. Obviously, it's 14 years old, and it's, um, you know, a little... Kinko's job, but I can make it available on my uh, on my website as a PDF download. So if anybody's interested in that, let me know and I can throw that up in my shop for you. Number two, uh, the last couple of years I've been teaching online classes for svslearn.com and one of the classes I've been really wanting to teach is a comics class, how to do comics. Um, several years ago I did a live class uh, for people here in, in Utah. I just rented a space downtown and had about 10 students and just poured everything I've learned about comics into that class and and and, and uh, made a curriculum and made assignments and all that all that stuff and uh, I think I think the class was really good 
and I've been wanting to do it again for uh, an online audience. Um, so what I need to know from you is if you're interested in that class, let me know in the comments what your questions are about making comics. Like what would be the most um, you know, pressing thing that I could, I could answer for you in that class. Um, I've been working on comics for 14 years. I've worked with lots of artists. I've learned a lot from them. I've learned a lot on my own from my own studies and, and observations in comics and, and a lot from the flight artists that I worked with and the guys I've worked with at Marvel and just other artists who are friends. Um, and I have all this information. I'm writing notes down and making curriculum for, for this new class. But I want to know from you guys what you want to learn in the class. So if you could let me know in the comments, that would be great. And just let me know if there's any interest in something like that. I'd really appreciate that. Okay, talk to you next week. Bye.